Welcome to Tech News Briefing. It's Monday, August 14th. I'm Zoe Thomas for The Wall Street Journal. Summer is coming to a close, and we all know what that means. Back to school. This year, things could be different because of, you guessed it, generative artificial intelligence. Everyone's using it. Like, it's, it's slowly taking over. In this three-part series, Reading, Writing, and Algorithms, we'll explore how generative AI is being used in schools, how it's affecting learning outcomes, and how it's reshaping the market for education technology. To kick things off, we're going to look at how students are using generative AI tools and where the line gets drawn between assistance and cheating. Because it's not so clear cut. Academia is in uncharted waters. I've covered education for 12 years. I haven't seen anything remotely close to this. People compare this to the printing press, to Gutenberg, to the calculator. The technology shift is orders of magnitude larger than anything else we've seen. Doug Belkin is an education reporter with The Wall Street Journal. He's talking about generative AI programs. The one you're probably most familiar with is ChatGPT. Since it launched back in November, ChatGPT and other tools like it have raised questions about how they could reshape entire industries. According to consulting firm McKinsey, generative AI will increase productivity, potentially adding trillions of dollars a year to the global economy. Customer service, sales, software engineering, and more could be dramatically changed by these tools. That means the future workers filling these jobs will need to understand how to use the technology. And right now, those future workers are still in classrooms. The first time I did it, I used it for an assignment. I believe it was a warm-up in history class. Antonio Ray Garcia, he goes by Ray, is a 17-year-old high school senior from Elgin, Texas, outside of Austin. Ray says the first time he came across generative AI was on Snapchat. The social media platform launched a chatbot called MyAI earlier this year. It's powered by technology from OpenAI, the creator of ChatGPT. When it came out originally, a lot of people were like, whoa, skeptical, what's this? Um, not me. I went, I went straight into it. I was like, what's this? What's that? Asking questions, testing its limits. Ray is one of many students who say they've used generative AI tools like this and ChatGPT to complete homework, essays, and other assignments. This past May, half of students aged 12 to 18 said they've used ChatGPT for school, according to a poll from Common Sense Media, a child internet safety organization. When Ray first used it, he says he just started by putting in a short prompt. Remember that history assignment he mentioned? Well, he got an a on it, based on the AI answer the chatbot spat out, in addition to some editing he did. Did you think at all or worry at all that you were going to be seen as cheating by doing that? Um, at the moment, <laughs> not even going to lie to you, I thought I was pretty sneaky with it, so I was not concerned about it so far. But later on, when more opinions started forming about ChatGPT and more people started learning about it, that's when I was like, okay, maybe I should stop this because some people are saying it's cheating, some people are saying it's assistance. Ray says a lot of teachers at his school, Manor New Technology High School, now support using generative AI. That includes the principal, who also happens to be Ray's dad. Principal Bobby Garcia says he wants his teachers to figure out ways to incorporate AI programs into their classrooms. And he doesn't consider students who use it to be cheating. For me, it's a lot like punching numbers into a calculator can give you information But then you have to be able to draw conclusions on that your own and be able to express what those numbers mean. And just like calculators are everywhere now that we all have smartphones in our pockets, Garcia says generative AI is here to stay. But a big question remains. How do you draw the line between how much AI is acceptable versus how much student input is acceptable? The answer is we don't know. So that's something that we're having to navigate through ourselves. One of the things that we like to show our kids is that life is messy and complicated. This is one of those examples where we're trying to find out 
what it is that kids could get out of this that would be detrimental to their learning. And we're having to work through that just as they are pushing us to figure out how they're going to be able to use it in the ways that they want to. Garcia isn't alone in trying to decipher the impact these tools could have on students' learning. But while he's embracing the tech, others are taking a different approach and cracking down on it, fighting AI with AI. Remember his son, Antonio Ray Garcia? Well, he's just one of many students using AI to help with their school assignments. And while Ray says he edits the responses he gets from generative AI programs to make them his own, he says not all his peers do the same. It's slowly taking over, as scary as it sounds. A lot of people use, like, raw material from ChatGPT for finals, like essays, write me an essay on this, write me an essay on that. Some schools, even entire school districts, banned ChatGPT when it came out including New York City public schools, Seattle public schools, and the Los Angeles Unified School District. New York has since reversed that decision, and Seattle says it's now allowing teachers and some students studying computer science to use it. But for schools that want to prevent or limit the use of generative AI tools, they've now got AI of their own. One example is GPT-0. It's like you're taking the machine and using it to fight itself. Edward Tien is the co-creator of GPT-0. He began working on the program last winter after ChatGPT came out. At the time, he was an undergraduate at Princeton University. And amid all the hype around ChatGPT, he wondered if the average person reading something online would know when tools like it had been used. I was already doing some research with Princeton on detecting when and where AI was being used. Can I turn that research into an app that people can just use everywhere and everybody can have access to? GPT-0 works by scanning a text for randomness and a factor they call burstiness, basically how varied it is. The more random and varied a piece of text, the more likely it was written by a human. Tian says the company raised $3.5 million in its first six months. He plans to keep its detection site free for everyday users, so school districts or teachers with limited financial resources will still have access. But to grow the business, GPT-0 is making deals with enterprise users, like edtech companies, including the maker of learning management system Canvas. These kinds of deals with edtech companies are a sign that schools, whether they hate generative AI or embrace it, know they can't ignore it. But even as they look for ways to prevent AI from being used for cheating, or try to balance how much they're used to help with assignments, teachers are concerned about how much it could cost students if AI does too much of their work. Here's our reporter Doug Belkin again. There are folks who are deeply concerned that students will not be able to think clearly if you don't ever learn to write well. Writing is really thinking on paper, and so if you're not mastering the ability to write and to think clearly, that hits a lot of other issues. Problem solving, being able to tease out the elements within a particular problem or a challenge. And so if people use AI all the time and they don't master the basics, and the foundational elements of learning, then that has some pretty terrifying potential consequences for students. We'll dive more into that next week and hear from teachers about how generative AI is changing how they work. And that's it for this first episode of Reading, Writing, and Algorithms. You can catch regular episodes of Tech News Briefing all the rest of this week. And if you want even more tech news, check out our website, wsj.com. Today's show was produced by Julie Chang. Our supervising producer is Melanie Roy, and our executive producer is Chris Sinsley. We had editorial support from Aisha Al-Muslim, Falana Patterson, and Chastity Pratt. This episode was mixed by Jess Fenton. I'm your host, Zoe Thomas. Thanks for listening.